Hello everyone, it's Roy and Amy here. We just spent three weeks of last month campervening around Japan and we realized what a great way it is to see the country. In this video, we're going to share with you why it's such a great way to travel and some tips and tricks for your own travels. Point number one. Campervening around Japan is a relatively cheap way to see the country. In Japan, they have Michi no Ekis or free roadside stations. These rest stops are equipped with heaps of great features, such as bathrooms. Every rest stop has bathrooms and they're usually very clean. Most provide a water fountain, so you can top up your water bottles and water canisters, so you can essentially never pay for water on your trip. And if you're lucky, there might even be some free Wi Fi available. And lastly, some, but not all, have a tourist information centre and maybe one or two restaurants. So compared to a country like Australia where we're from, where you cannot stay in rest stops overnight, Michi no Ekis are a great way to travel around Japan. One feature that most rest stops in Japan don't have, however, is showers, but this is easily overcome as usually we found around Michi no Ekis there are a lot of onsens or they may have even been attached to the rest stop. So what we did is at night time, at the end of the day, we would go to the onsen and have our showers there. On average, we found that we would pay about 600 to 700 yen, which is roughly eight to nine Australian dollars to use these onsens. So it's a great way to relax, have a shower and get clean. For our trip, we hired it from Camgo Camper Vans in Tokyo from a bloke called Kimi. Kimmy was such a lovely guy and hiring it through him was such a breeze because his English was really good and he really took great care of us. The cost for the three weeks was 140,000 yen or roughly about 1800 Australian dollars which converts to about 85 Australian dollars per night. So when you're looking at the cost of the camper van and then the fact that the Michi no Ekis are free it really is quite a good way to travel around Japan. One possible downside of traveling around Japan in your own camper van or car is road tolls. They can be super expensive. However, if you avoid the tolls and take non-toll routes, you get the opportunity to see the countryside. Which leads us into point number two, which is when you're camper vanning, you're able to get off the beaten track. A lot of people when they come to Japan do a very typical route including Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka and maybe don't see much of the country which is completely fine and they are great places to see but if you want to do something that's a little bit maybe more traditional and you get to see some places in Japan that you wouldn't otherwise going in a camper van is a great option allows you to get off those more touristy routes and get into areas that aren't quite as accessible with public transport don't get me wrong, the public transport in Japan is fantastic. However, being in a camper van, you can get to some really beautiful spots such as Ia Valley, which we showed in our last video. Getting to Ia Valley wouldn't be too much of a problem with public transport. However, once you got there, you were only limited to taxi rides or bus tours of the area. The bus tours sometimes only ran on the weekends and the taxis, they could be up to $300 a day, which also leads us into point number three, independence. Before we started our trip in Japan, we basically had the first couple of nights booked and that was it. And we weren't sure how that was gonna work out. But once we started using Michi no Ekis, we realized we had so much independence and so much flexibility in where we could go because we didn't have to make bookings ahead of time. This meant that if we wanted to stay in an area for more time than we had originally planned, it was very easy to do. Or if we weren't liking an area as much as we had thought we would, we could simply move on, find a new Michi no Eki in a different area. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> so if you're not quite confident with your driving abilities in Japan, don't worry because Japan's got this fantastic sticker system where it can identify new drivers. As you can see, there's an arrow sticker that Kimi gave us when we first hopped in the van and it recognizes you as a new driver, which was great because even though we're driving on the same side of the road as we do in Australia, we still weren't very confident, particularly leaving from Tokyo where there is a lot going on, there's a lot of cyclists, a lot of motorists, and we were just getting into the groove of things. Point number four, authentic experiences. Camper vanning, we found, 
gave us some really great experiences when we got off the beaten track and were in smaller areas with Japanese people. We were in one area on the coast where we stopped in a parking lot, we we're just chilling, having a little bit of a rest and this older Japanese couple came up to us and started having a chat. Now, this was a little bit hard because our Japanese is not the best and that was at the very start of our trip where we weren't feeling very confident in our Japanese abilities. But it was still really lovely to have people just come up to us, ask us where we're from, where we're going, get some insights on the country and really just have an authentic experience with some locals. This is not to say that if you don't camp a van around Japan and you do more touristy areas like Tokyo or Kyoto, you're not going to have these experiences. We just found that we had them more when we were getting into areas that weren't quite as popular and had more local Japanese people rather than foreigners. Camper vanning in Japan, it's not quite the perfect solution. There can be some challenging things at times. Things such as going in the middle of winter, being too cold in the van, going in the middle of summer, being way too hot and not being able to cool down, uh, snow tires, uh, road closures because of snow or bad weather. In saying that, we were camper vanning around Japan from the start of November through to almost the end. And while it did get quite cold at some points, maybe down to around zero degrees at night time, we were very comfy and cozy inside. So perhaps it wouldn't be so great in the middle of winter, but on those shoulder seasons, it's really, really good. If you were considering camper vanning around Japan or were looking for a different way to travel, we hope that we've given you some tips and tricks for how you can camper van in the country. If you would like to see some of our adventures when we were camper vanning in Japan, you can watch our video on Iya Valley and the time when we climbed up Mount Miyune. We'd also love to hear your stories of how you've camper vanned in any other country or how you've traveled around Japan. So share your stories in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to see more content from us. Until then, see you later.